Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to elaborate on my video about the trading framework designed by professional traders that I covered on July 11th, 2022. That video was more of an overview on how to put many pieces together and execute plays at market open to consistently secure profits every single morning. I actually received a lot of great questions and feedback, and I've decided now it's time to start breaking down each of those components further, starting with how to build extreme conviction around the tickers we are analyzing for our watch list the following day. Once we cover how to build this conviction, I'll cover how to plot the entry and exit levels and then how to find these ideas each night, which will likely be a multi-part series since Tradedix offers many great tools for getting these ideas. Before we get started, if you'd like to get a 10% discount for Tradedix, don't forget to use my referral link in the description. You also find referral links for TradingView and Top Step funded trader programs that will give us both discounts. Lastly, if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to help me grow this channel. With all that being said, let's get right into it. So as I mentioned in that video that covers the framework that I use, it's important to keep our watch list very picky. In order to do that, when we find a list of, say, five or more names that we want to analyze, it's crucial to narrow them down to only the very best. So there are many ways we can do this, and I want to go through an example using Apple and cover all of the data points I assess before determining if it's worthy to be on my morning watch list. I don't like having more than three really solid names to play, and once I execute on them, I simply switch back to trading SPY, QQQ, or IWM. So it's really important just to pick the, the top three, despite how large my list is. So the first thing that we should look at whenever we're deciding on a ticker. So in this case, let's say that I noticed Apple was a great play and, and there's several ways to do this. Uh, we could have found it using, um, just as a quick example, and like I said, I wanna get into uh, a, a video, but we could have maybe seen top flow for the day and notice that, okay, Apple had a lot of call volume coming in. You can see there's always a bunch of other names. And again, I don't wanna get too far into that, but. So let's say that we landed on Apple and we want to start assessing if it's a valid play for the day. So I always want to take a look to see overall in terms of the rest of the market, how it performed. And you can see Apple today was very green. We can see that it definitely made some good gains. It wasn't the very top of the list, but it was up there. And more, most importantly, I want to see if the sector that it's in, which is technology, uh, has been doing well. And we can see that recently there has been a lot of bullish rotation into the technology sector which is a really good sign for apple so i know that it's not going against it's the sector that it's in that it's not an outlier but it's actually going with the herd which is a good sign and then actually and so just to point this out this was on the stock market dashboard if we look at the options market dashboard which many of you will likely know because this is the same place that you can find market net flow which is an incredible tool we can scroll down here we, again, we see it's on the top options flow, which we just saw from the Discord. We can also see other names that, that are probably part of it, like Comcast and Twitter, other tech names that have been getting hit uh, pretty hard with, with call volume. And if we scroll down here, we just wanna make sure that indeed there was a good amount of flow premium coming into the sector, which obviously it's not the highest. So, I mean, that, but that's okay. It's still green, so still overall, this, this sector has been getting a lot of bullish uh, flow premiums, which is, is again, something that we wanna see. And we can also look at the historical sector flow and you can turn off some of this noise to see how that looks if, uh, if you're having trouble spotting it. Uh, so that's always a good sign, the fact that there is bullish flow coming in and we can see here, it's even on the uh, calls market dashboard. Uh, so all symbols with their call options flow statistics. So it's definitely be getting a lot of bullish volume. And actually, Apple was the name that I played yesterday, and I am actually considering playing it tomorrow. If you're, this video is being recorded on July 14th, 2022. So if it's past that date, then it might not be a viable option, but it does seem like this could continue. So we need, still need to assess this further. And what I, what I do next is I go to the ticker dashboard and I go to options. And you can also find some of this information in the Discord but I always look at algo flow to see how bullish it is. Now you can see as algo flow, which is this green line has been moving up. It's been taking Apple with it. And we did seem to sort of peak today, but 
at the same time doesn't mean that the run has to be over. One thing I learned a long time ago is that I don't try to call tops and bottoms. I wait until I see trend shifts. And right now there hasn't been, at least for intraday trend, there has not been a trend shift for Apple. So to me, it's still viable. Now, I also like looking at the daily daily and weekly premiums heat maps to see where what they're targeting. And this is a good sign here. So now if we look at Apple, we can see that it ran close to 150 today. And, uh, and just to take a peek at the chart, which I always pair with it. So 148.47 is where we're at now. We can see there has been a ton of bullish premium. So $2 million in premiums uh, for the 722 expiration, which is good because we're doing intraday trades. So, and we're looking at taking in the morning. So we're, we're more concerned with the short dated premiums and September 16th also falls in line with that, which you can see 100, we have over $10 million in bullish premium. This is net premiums. So basically the bullish premium subtracted by the bearish premium. And we have almost $11 million at the 145 strike, which is massive. And even if we look at October, I mean, we're almost at $4 million for October. So there's still room for this thing to move. And, and we can see the same, the weekly premium gives gives a, gives a, all the net premiums for the past week. And we can still see this thing is very bullish. Now, the daily premium heat map though is sort of telling me that there is still room to run. And if we look at net premiums, this is, this is actually really interesting because we can see here that as these net premiums went down, so did Apple, right? So price, so flow is typically a leading indicator to price. Not always, but typically, as you know, if you've been trading for any period of time, nothing in the market is guaranteed. Nothing is perfect, but it's typically a good leading indicator to price. And we can see that if we look at these premiums. So July 7th, we saw them drop down. Apple dropped down. We think see things flip back up and Apple starts moving up. Now, one concerning thing is the bearish premiums kind of, kicking up a little bit here. So that is a consideration. Uh, and that's something that's gonna be in the back of my mind. If I'm building a watch list and I'm comparing this to others, this would sort of be a point against it, right? So imagine that we're, we're giving it, a, uh, we're scoring it. And, you know, based on the things that we talked about, uh, say it's it's uh, every time it has something positive for it, we give it a plus one. And every time it's something negative for it, we give it a minus one. And this, in my opinion, could be a potential minus one. Now, if we look at the net flow, this, now this is one day and you can also go to cumulative history and go back all the way up to 30 days, which is really nice. And we can see shifts and, and actually, if we look at the historical net premiums, the shifts will, will also help confirm that. But we can see that recently uh, that uh, we started shifting bullish. And as, as call buying started and put selling sort of leveled off and then fell, so did price start moving. So, I mean, there is a chance here that we had, so we had this bullish cross recently. There is a chance here that it continues. And of course, in order for, we only need to take this play in the morning. If you haven't watched that framework video that I mentioned that I did on July 11th, 2022, stop what you're doing right now and go watch it so you understand what we're talking about. But we're only looking to execute these plays in the morning. And if we leave runners for the whole day, which is what actually happened today with Apple, where uh, I executed calls when it hit my trigger, and then it just proceeded to run for the whole day, and, and the, my runners were able to pick up the majority of that. But so there is a chance that you know when we enter calls, when we see it pull back down to our call trigger level, and then start to ideally hold and start to move up, that we hold it for the whole day as long as net flow looks good. And I should also point out that. If we go into the Discord, if we want to see short dated expirations, which is really nice, we can actually type T net T hyphen net flow Apple, and we can say show us expirations expiring within the cumulative one day expiring within 15 days. And you can see for the short dated expirations, we are very bullish. This chart right here is showing it across all expirations and they actually look very similar, which is a good sign. We can also look at it for seven days uh, just to make sure that, okay, even everything expiring. Now, this shows puts sort of coming up a bit and calls sort of coming down a bit, which is certainly noteworthy, but it's not something to really concern us too much until they start, until this, if this trend were to continue. I mean, we can see puts coming up and then starting to dip calls dip a little bit but start pushing back up so again in my opinion we still have room to run and actually someone's running a command that i love this is a new command that was introduced which is dark pool density 
Now purple means we can't assess if it was bullish or bearish. We can only do so with block trades, but this does help when, when determining levels and we can see this was a bearish block trade in this area. Uh, and we can see Apple rejected off of that. When we actually got above it, then that sort of acts as support. We did reject again, but chances are if we do pull back into this same dark bull density area, it may indeed act as support going forward, which is something worth noting. Uh, I do I do like these dark pull density commands. Now, we there is a lot of dark pull activity happening here, but again, we can't know for sure what the sentiment is, and we'll, and we'll get into that a little bit more shortly. Now, we can also look at call versus put volume, call versus put open interest. The thing to keep in mind here is we don't know if it was call selling or put selling. So it is nice to see volumes increasing though, which we and open interest increasing because if open interest inc increases, that means there's still contracts left open going into the following day, which means that that sentiment still exists, right? And so that's but if, if open interest is decreasing around certain strikes, that could mean that that interest has is diminishing and it might no longer be uh, a play. Now, this is a matrix that shows us whale expectations, meaning um, if uh, if based on whale activity and, and, it, and I don't really use these. I mean, it shows you when there's like notable reactions to whale activity and, and these are not something that you should ever just follow on their own but you can get an idea of the whale sentiment and as you can see overall the whale sentiment is has shifted bullish uh the the bearish pre the bearish sentiment has also increasing a little bit but the, it's outweighed by the bullish sentiment now the volume and open interest heat maps are very great so if we look at open interest and i like looking at like the seven day net change again these are intraday trades so we don't want to go too far out right because we're literally looking to take these the following morning but we can actually see shifts and now so this is a negative shift around the 145 strike which is notable and of course we're we're looking we're more concerned with the higher strikes to see if there's chances for this move to continue we could see that for the 722 expiration 131 percent increase in the 150 strike of open interest which is nice and this does highlight for you like the bigger areas it can be sometimes skewed by information like this and this is meaning a, a lot of uh um whether it was bearish open put uh open interest being established or open interest dropping off not sure this is sort of skewing the numbers but i mean we can see that there is around 146 uh, strike expiring tomorrow, 7-15-2022, that 611% increase at the 146 strike. And we can go down here and see this open interest. And, and again, uh, it's, it's, it's always good to look at the expirations and see how they're changing because we want to see if, if, if it looks like there's still interest as we go forward. So like even looking at 729 at the 150 strike there's a ton of call open interest here now again we don't know if it's call selling or or call buying but there's a lot of contracts that were open here now i'm not going to get too far this these all these are are information like these can be their own video for themselves when we start talking about gamma exposure and volatility surface and, and skew structure and things like this i mean skew is interesting the difference between 10 delta puts and 10 delta calls that uh, determines uh, over the course of different expirations dates and how it's looked the past few weeks. So we can see it's um, sort of skewed down here. Now, um, I mean, that, that could be a point against it. Uh, well, also we, we, it's important to pay attention to, to the dates. This is really far out. So in the immediate future, uh, so if we look at 722, 729, we see it's skewed positively so it's going above 10 which is always a good sign right so there is a chance that this could continue here and then as we go further out into the future it seems to be negative but again we're just looking for tomorrow uh, so the skew is positive the volatility surface we can see how uh, IV might increase across different strikes which we're not necessarily super concerned with and I mean th this would also be impacted by things like earning plays and what's not whatnot i mean uh for the strikes we're concerned with around 148 the volatility is sort of the mean volatility is sort of average right around 40 percent now the dealer positioning dealer build up uh this this is basically in regards to hedging so basically if there's a lot of call buying that means dealers are short calls which means that they need to hedge 
in order if there's a positive move they need to buy shares in order to hedge of the underlying ticker and the same goes with gamma exposure and gex profiles where we can see that there's gamma flips and we so we can see and this is usually the case usually the monthly expirations have the most amount of gamma exposure centered around them and it kind of gives you idea of where uh, not only reversal points would be so we can see like when we do hit 150 this could be uh, there's a ton of gamma exposure built around this and uh, because of the hedging mechanics this this could actually end up being a reversal point if we if we get to 150 which is something we should be aware of and then it's also worth noting that the largest areas of gamma exposure which is around 145 um, you know if we drop down there could again act as a reversal point where we move up to 150 but also it could sort of act as a magnet so I mean the gamma exposure profile and how uh, act how it's being hedged essentially and, and as we can see here so tomorrow right so when when all of these when a lot of this uh, these options expire off tomorrow at 715 uh, the, the the way that they have to hedge for the the deltas on these contracts is going to shift because after after uh, tomorrow happens and a lot of these options expire uh, this means that they're they're going to actually have to so and it says it right here when deltas are negative which this is negative delta this means that dealers will have to reduce their delta exposure by buying back more shares of the underlying so this indicates that when all of this the these deltas expire off tomorrow that they're going to actually have to for because of charm exposure uh, charm is basically related to how theta impacts delta and that relationship there and so when all this expires off their chances are they're going to have to end up buying shares of apple so this could sort of make a bullish case here and then vanna now this is a brand new chart i'm still determining how to read this particular chart it's sort of laid out differently than where i've seen it in other places but vanna exposure is the volatility exposure so how iv impacts delta and uh th this could determine um if you know if if, if there's a, a flip of reversal point based on expiration but i don't want to get into this here because i still honestly i still need to learn more about it myself now and then we can see the top contracts here there so there's a lot of uh calls being purchased uh, a lot of premium centered around september and october and then of course tomorrow and then the following friday there's a lot of calls and there's a lot less of it for for puts now again we we don't we're not really sure if this is buying or selling but based on everything we looked at we can assume that this is a lot of call buying and then of course we can see whale positioning so how big money their sentiment towards and this is something i really like looking at so the orange bar this is the 145 strike we can see that there's been a massive accumulation in whale activity and again we can look at these commands um on at, on the discord as well like the the whale watch there's actually several really nice commands that we can run here that I, I like looking at so if we look at whale watch apple we can see the same sort of layout now it might look a little different because this is over a two-week period uh, which can be different sometimes from what we see on the website but also we can look at there so there's another one up there which is the the summary of the flow one thing I like looking at is all of the AI predictions. So TradeX has multiple AI tools to help us gauge sentiment. And we can actually see the intraday uh, AI is actually somewhat bearish. So that's, again, that would be a point against Apple, right? We may have, it's kind of thinking that we may have capped out. Now, the options AI is somewhat neutral. The swing AI is bullish, which is sort of interesting. I don't necessarily know if I'm if I'd give too much weight to that now um, and just to get in to some other quick commands so we already did the net flow command you can also do algo flow but we also have our flow heat map here we can also see that uh, so we can and of course we need to make sure that we include the the ticker name here but we can also see that we have we can see where where a gamma flip might occur using the gex profile command which uh, we can see here the the zero point uh, so a gamma flip basically is when we would shift from negative gamma to positive gamma which none of these prices would really do it we're going to be in negative gamma environment for a long time which essentially means high volatility so large swings back and forth that's not really a sentiment gauge as of right now it just means that it's volatile which 
if we're trading options is exactly what we want. That's actually a good thing, but you can also see the gamma exposure here. And I don't wanna to run too many commands. Uh, you can also do like Monte Carlo projections, which are kind of cool, which is uh, as a, um, a randomized way of like it introduces random variables to project how the ticker might move in the near future, both bullish and bearish. And this is indicating that we're expecting to see it go down. So it might be overextended. But what I really like is looking rather than looking at and I keep doing that running it without the uh, the ticker associated with but one thing I like doing a lot is looking at unusual flow and big flow and I like doing this because I want to see okay what was actually happening so bid side typically means selling or passive buying ask side typically means buying or passive selling right so nothing is ever for sure but this is how we can typically derive if it's call buying or put put buying or call selling or put selling based on this. So we could see that it seems like uh, BB would be below bid, AA would be above ask. And we can see that there's a lot of put uh, selling here, which were sweeps, which is always a good sign for the September expiration. That's a bullish sign. We can see what we, for the most part, would be call buying for these short-term expirations. Now there is some call selling for a further, a higher up strike at 180 for further expiration. So we're not really concerned with that. That, that That's not a, anything that's gonna scare us off. We don't really know right here, this is a split. Don't necessarily know the sentiment there. Uh, and then again, we have some, some more major put selling, some more call buying. Now this again is super far out and really deep in the money. But, uh, and there's other reasons why they would be doing this. Uh, they Part of it is that there's a huge amount of Delta when you're that deep in the money. So, I mean, that could be a very bullish sign. It's just very far out is the thing. And then and then based on how deep in the money this is, 1 million in premiums actually isn't that much for a ticker like Apple if it's that deep in the money. But um, still worth noting. And then we do have one big put, what could be considered a put buy here potentially, uh, but we also have a put sell. So it could have just been that this was aggressive put selling. Um, so again, ass side typically means either buying or, um, excuse me, uh, not aggressive put selling, but passive put selling. So it, ass side is typically, as I stated, uh, buying or passive selling. And so this could have actually been a passive sell. And it does sort of seem to line up with all of the other bids we've seen around that same expiration of strike. So it looks pretty good here. Now, if we look at the unusual flow, so the flow that stands out to us now, we do see again some call selling, and these are closer expirations, which is sort of noteworthy. I mean, and, and again, this is unusual, and this is why it's standing out because below bid call selling at the 155 strike, which could tell us that we still see a run up tomorrow, but we're not going to see it go beyond 150 or 155. So, considering it's at 148.50, we might actually be at a peak. We do however see much more premium with call buying here very high volume and when you see the volume over open interest that means that there, these contracts were trade there's a whole bunch of buying and closing around these contracts the open interest is how many were left how many contracts were left open essentially by the end of the day when when that data gets reported in then we have some more uh put potentially put selling activity and then uh some more de like some decent, uh, we can't really tell which leg this was on, but it, it's always good to look at this flow, especially if you, and, and I do actually highly recommend always looking at live flow, and I'm not gonna go through all of the live flow here, but if you're not familiar, you can actually pull up the options live flow and some quick tips. Now, the amount of premiums you wanna search for really depends on the name. So, I mean, Apple is a mega cap stock, so, we typically only want to filter for really the largest premium. So I would typically start at 100,000 for a ticker like Apple. But if you're doing smaller names, like if you were doing Roblox or names that are under $50 uh, for their spot price or for, excuse me, under $50 for the, the stock price itself, then this minimum premium needs to drop down. There's no one size fits all. You have to understand, okay, if you're looking at mega caps, that get traded a lot, like names like Apple, you really need to bump this minimum premium number up. However, if it's smaller names that might not get traded as much, then really it should maybe drop down to 10,000 or 20,000. It really depends. And oftentimes it's always good to play with this value depending on the ticker you're looking at 
to see which tells you the most. And I do like looking at short expiries. Other than that, I typically leave everything else on because I don't want to ignore any information. And then I'll actually look through this flow to help me to gauge the sentiment for the short term, right? Because again, and you'll notice that you typically see a lot of this stuff coming in uh, end of day, which is a very good sign, right? That we, you want to see a lot of, if we, if we want a bullish trade the following day, we want to see a lot of bullish flow coming in the end of the day, because that's not going to influence the stock price majorly going immediately at that time, but it means that they're setting up for a big move the next day. So live flow can really help uh, really shine a lot of light on that. And, and again, just remember what we talked about with ask and bid, uh, you know, trying to determine if it was buying or selling that was happening. I also like looking at the dark pool trades and we did do that with that dark pool density command. And you can, you can also look at dark pool levels so we can do uh, TDP levels, Apple, and we can see similar information here. Now, again, the the time that this is showing, I believe that when we do it on the Discord is for two weeks, uh, and the web dashboard, I think, shows more of a larger aggregate. So sometimes this data can be a little bit different, but we can see that uh, oftentimes these dark pool levels, even though we can't necessarily gauge sentiment from them, they can be areas of support, which is worth noting when you go in to see, okay, if I want to see a pullback, uh, maybe one, 146 would probably be too far of a pullback for what I'm looking for. Maybe not. It really depends. I haven't looked at the chart yet, but sometimes if a dark pool level is somewhat close, you can use it as a springboard, right? But the reality is, uh, as of right now, I'd, I'd be looking for like 148.15, basically. If, if this thing gaps up a little bit tomorrow at open, I'd like to see it pull back into this previous high and then bounce off of it if I'm going to take calls. But that's that's typically, I'm going to save that for a different video because this is already going on for longer than I had hoped. Now, the other thing is the dark pool sentiment. So uh, we, we get this only from block trades and it can tell us the overall sentiment. And we can see, I mean, there was a good bit of selling and yet we still had to move up. And then, so the dark pool sentiment is sort of diminishing here, but overall it's still bearish, right? So when it comes to the dark pool data we have, they're still bearish. And that's one thing that's sort of concerning me with the Apple, as we saw with the big flow that we looked at, there was some major call selling at 150 and 155. So again, with this being already at 148.50, we might've capped out now. Again, it could gap up in the morning and then we adjust our trigger level and it's ready to go and we still take it. But I'm going to obviously look for the more factors we have going for us, the higher chance that this is going to end up on my watch list. And as of right now, I'd have to compare it to many other names, which I'm not going to do on this video. Otherwise, it would be an hour and a half video. But uh, we can also see here, and, and also I know this seems like it takes a long time, but as you do this from more and more triggers, you get really good at doing it quickly. And you can you can fire off the commands pretty fast and just gauge it all, boom, 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 back to back to back to back on the Discord, which is one useful thing, or scroll through the options dashboard. But we can, we can also look at other factors here, like seasonality, like how it performs different times of the year, things like that, other financial metrics. If you are fundamental gauge for intraday trading, I'm usually not concerned with fundamentals. I love this saying that, that the stock market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. And it's so true, which just highlights why flow and sentiment is so important because especially for us intraday traders, where we're looking to time our entries, get our money and get out. Fundamentals oftentimes take a while to play out for the market to uh, digest those fundamentals and make moves. So I typically don't put too much value on them for uh, scout plays that I'm, I'm only looking to hold for maybe an hour at, at the most. But the last thing that I want to talk about, and then we can close up this video really is, is uh, the macroeconomic news. And we always have to take this into consideration. Now, Apple was so bearish on Wednesday, I mean, excuse me, so bullish on Wednesday, July 13th, that we went into this news and we actually had bad news and it drove the markets down massively today. But Apple flow still held true and Apple made a massive run up and it almost seemed to take the rest of the market with it. So while it is important to pay attention to this stuff and how like CPI numbers are always huge, PPI numbers are always huge. PCE numbers are always huge. So 
FLMC minutes is always big. It's always important to factor this in and just know that, okay, macroeconomic news might outweigh my play. It's, it's something we should have in the back of our mind at all times. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily cancel out the play. And again, we had bad PPI data. And you can see that Apple had gapped down. And if we just look at what QQQ did, and this is something else I should know, it's important to uh, always take into consideration um, take into consideration how SPY and QQQ and IWM are performing, especially if Apple is both in the S&P and 500 and NASDAQ. So it plays a very, it has a very heavy weight in both of those ETFs. Now, it's also good to consider, like if you're looking at semiconductors like AMD, NVIDIA, TSM, MU, it's good to look at semi ETFs. It's also good to look at, um, uh, like if you're doing small caps, uh, consider looking at IWM, which is the Russell 2000. But we can see that overnight, so we had this bad news this morning and everything plummeted and then it looked like it was gonna keep going. And then all of a sudden we reached this bottom and we just rocketed. And we might be at sort of a temporary bottom right now, which is another compelling reason why Apple might run. And this is QQQ I'm looking at here, but ideally we'd wanna see if we're looking at the chart, we want to see as we move higher, we want to see volume also increasing with it, right? But if a move's going to continue, volume should be increasing with it. Once it starts diminishing, or once we see stopping volume come in, then it's a sign that it's not going to keep happening. But uh, Apple on the daily looks really good for that. I mean, it looks like we have these bullish candles and and we have volume increasing and we have earnings coming up soon too which is always another important factor to consider i never play i i don't i don't like doing earning plays because of iv crush but i always do like playing earnings continuations but that this might be something here where maybe we're going to drive up a bit i mean another consideration that goes with that uh my, my concern about 150 or 155 being at the top based on the flow we were looking at is also using volume profile we can see volume really drops off here so we're going to need some serious momentum to break through this volume gap and uh we're kind of right at it so again that's a concern with apple having topped out now again we could gap it open and then just immediately fill that volume gap it's always a possibility but uh when it comes to only picking the best of the best personally i'm going to keep looking for another name here and who knows apple might be on the list uh, it had a lot of compelling reasons why it might be a good fit but i can't stress it enough and and when when executing this professional trader framework where we're looking one to three plays that are just absolutely we have a huge amount of conviction around and we're going to play that directional convention conviction at the open once we get a pullback like we can see with apple we pulled back into our trigger level and then just proceed to rock it off and actually there were two great potential entry points here uh, before app, the Apple move just proceed to run. And, and if I was going to take calls, I would then the filing date pick a level and play those calls based on if, if the sentiment was overly bullish. But I hope this video helped shed light on how I decide which plays I'm going to take and I will keep going. And soon, soon I promise it's just tough with the full time job, but I do want to start putting out my watch list every day, at least on Twitter or something. Um, with the levels that I'm going to use, but typically I, I usually have them in like 10 minutes before open. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to also work at the same time I manage to play. So it's difficult, but I am going to try to do better with it to help give people, uh, insight into these plays because they've absolutely been crushing it lately, but I really appreciate all the support. And of course, leave a comment and, uh, or reach out to me in the discord, trade discord, if you have any questions and thanks for watching.